So you know the story of the race between the two brothers who were the sons of Lord Shankar. There was Karatikeya and Ganesh, and they were supposed to have a race around the world. Now, of course, from all material logic, Kartikeya was much faster. He was a warrior. He's always seen holding a spear, and he's built like a very dexterous and powerful warrior who could fight with the speed of the mind. And not only that, his carrier is a very, very empowered peacock that can fly faster than lightning. And on the other side, there was Lord Ganesh. Lord Ganesh is mostly known as a pundit. He writes the Vedas. He sits up at Badrik Ashram with Veda Vyas, and he's writing and writing and writing. And his devotees, they are always offering him all these big ladus. So he's not very lean and thin. In fact, he's quite stout. So, you know, he's not such a fast runner like that. And although he's heavy and he's like that, he doesn't ride on a flying peacock, but he rides on a mouse. How fast is a mouse? So then the race began. On your mark, get set, go. And Kartikeya went, whoosh, he was off. Nobody could see him within the next second. And Lord Ganesh, he's just, okay, mouse, go. Do, 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 like that. Do, 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 do. And Ganesh was thinking, wow, I have complete faith in the name of Ram. That is all I need. So he wrote on the ground the name Ram. And because he had absolute faith that Ram was non different than his name, he simply did parikram around the name of Ram. And a few seconds later, Kartikeya returned. And he saw Ganesh. He had only gone a few steps. He said, ah, just see. Lord Ganesh has won the race. What? How is this possible? Because it took you a few seconds to go around the whole world. But everything is within Ram. The name of Ram is non different than Ram. He has not only gone around the world, he has gone around the entire universe. Not only around the entire universe, he has gone around the entire cosmic manifestation. Not only around the entire cosmic manifestation, he has gone around the entire existence. He has circumambulated all infinity and everything within it. So this is the glory of the great souls. They have complete faith that the name of God is non different than the Lord himself. Rupa Goswami has told us, that if you like to travel, circumambulate the temple of Vishnu three times a day. Because if you circumambulate, you've already gone around everything that exists. You've been everywhere. Lord Chaitanya has prayed, my dear Lord, in your name you have empowered all of your potencies, all of your glories, everything is within your name. That is our faith. But how many really have that faith? That in all situations, if we simply call out the name of God, we are protected by his divine mercy. Draupadi, when she was being disrobed, she cried out, Hey Krishna, hey Govinda. And Krishna promised that if you approach me in devotion, I will preserve what you have and I carry what you lack. He preserved her chastity and he carried her sari. So it was so long that Dushasana could not disturb her. This is the glory of the name of God. So Lord Ganesh has so wonderfully and beautifully, through his own example, showed his complete faith in the name of God. And in this way, he is an acharya because he is teaching us by his example the goal of life, to have complete faith in the name of God. So therefore, we understand that he is a demigod and he is empowered to give material benedictions to those who approach him for that. But that does not please him. The demigods are never pleased by those who ask for material benedictions. They have to give it if you give them the proper service. But they are pleased when they see a person approaching them for the supreme goal of life, Prema Pumartha Mahan, which is love of God. So therefore, it is only really the devotees who really give pleasure and worship to the great demigods. Because the devotees are satisfying the real desires of the demigods. The demigods want to see everyone go back home, back to Godhead. The gopis worship Goddess Durga to have Krishna as their husband. Not because they wanted to enjoy Krishna, but they wanted to completely surrender their lives for Krishna's enjoyment. So in this way, if we really want to offer the ultimate glory and service for the pleasure of Lord Ganapati, the greatest thing we can do is glorify his divine qualities as a pure devotee of the Lord and be inspired by those divine qualities and not simply ask him like a businessman, give me this and give me that. But we offer him our love on the basis of the great inspiration he is giving us 
He has given us the Vedas and he has given us such a wonderful example of an Acharya. And therefore, if we really want to please him, we will ask him to help us to please the object of his love. And then we can really understand it from the point of view being above the three modes of material nature, from the point of view of striving for the conclusion of all knowledge, utter surrender to the feet of God. From that point of view, we can understand a relationship with such great empowered souls. From the transcendental point of view that Krishna is pleading with us to come to, we can accept everything favorable for devotional service and reject everything unfavorable. Increase of material attachments is unfavorable. Development of the service attitude, of the loving devotional attitude is utterly favorable. So let this be our real desire in life and then our lives will be perfect. When you water the root of the tree, all the parts of the tree are nourished. When we satisfy Krishna, who says, Aham saravasya prabhavo matu saravam pravartate, that he is the source and the root of everything. By that process, every demigod, every living being is ultimately satisfied. Because he is the root of all. So there is no greater pleasure to any of the devatas than when they see their devotees surrendering to Narayan. And there is no greater pleasure than if they can assist in helping us to remove impediments in the service of Narayan. So let us make this our great goal of life, and in this way, we will become most fortunate. And in this way, we can give the greatest pleasure to our object of worship. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on thesacredconnect.com.